Hello guys and welcome back to another Sims 4 speed build. We're back in the brownstones today and today we're doing what I'm calling the artist's brownstone. Before we jump into it, I just want to say this voiceover is going to be a little bit different today. Um, I'm not actually watching the video while I'm talking to you. I have a list of notes of things I wanted to speak about that I made while building because unfortunately, um, as you may have seen with the Minecraft videos, my work schedule has become very needy and I um, I simply do not have time right now to record much if ever really and so when I get these few moments even when I'm not at my desk when I when I have a couple moments um, I'm not at my setup right now I, uh, I'm just trying to keep up on things so I don't miss an upload but we're gonna go ahead and get started talking about this I wanted I had a couple very specific goals with this brownstone the first one was I knew I wanted like public space, public facing spaces, <clears throat> excuse me, and I wanted more private spaces. So what I mean by that is the like living, kitchen, dining area, I knew this artist might be taking clients in, right? Because if you're in the painting career, in theory, you're doing commissions, you're doing client work, you're talking about galleries, and a lot of that happens outside of the home. You can do it at coffee shops and things like that, but I also knew that I wanted a space where this sim would feel comfortable bringing clients into their home. I also sprinkled a little bit of photography equipment around, um, which you'll see probably later in the video, that in the same vein, you could take clients in, you know, you could do stuff like that. Um, so I wanted public facing spaces and I wanted more private spaces. So you definitely see, not a disconnect, but you definitely see the gap and where it jumps. The other thing I really wanted was like a light industrial undertone, but I didn't want it to be reclaimed factory or anything like that. And I think we kind of nailed that with like the mostly exposed bricks and with more plaster. It looks like someone came in and did it with intention but it's not like hey i live in an old shoe factory look at all these pipes and things it's more just like a little bit of a maybe more masculine tone i guess although i wouldn't even argue it's masculine it's just maybe a a sharper more assured tone than some aesthetics uh so i have it's a two bedroom and a two full bath but there's no bathrooms on the main floor there's a bathroom on the second floor um which would be i believe the first floor when you're not in America. Either way, it's not the ground floor <laughs> and one in the basement. I honestly struggled with this build quite a bit in terms of tone um, and like color scheme. I, like I said, I knew kind of what I wanted, but I, I was really struggling to get there. Every part of this, it got better as we moved into the more personal spaces because I knew who the sim in my head was. Um, a young artist in like New York who's had some success and is finally getting her own place. But um, in the public facing spaces, I had a harder time figuring out who she was, who she portrayed, if that makes sense. I, I knew I wanted the kitchen under the stairs. I knew I wanted it to have storage in the basement because like art supplies take, <laughs> take up so much space. And she has a studio in the attic. I knew I wanted that as well, but I didn't want the studio to look like like that was going to be where everything lived. Does that make sense? I wanted the studio to be a very usable space and the studio is in the attic space. So her bedroom is very like kind of pinks and greens and girly. I think that could very easily be changed. Um, and then the spare bedroom is very orange and I think could also very easily be changed. I also thought very strongly about making the second bedroom into a photography space because if you do the photography career you do need space to do that you do need a studio space i opted against that for playability with other people because i'm assuming you're coming in and you may not want to have a painter slash photographer you may want something else and two bedrooms does make it naturally more livable for more situations and depending what career you choose you could change the artist's loft into a photography loft if you wanted to or something different like that. I didn't put a ton of art in the house to start when you're build when I'm building this you will see that there was a lot of blank walls which I think works okay in most of the spaces because of the exposed brick. I don't think you need a lot of art in this house. However, I did go back and add art at the end because the original plan had been to add Sims paintings to the house and Sims photography to the house. To, to, to have like their artwork around, right? I thought that made the most sense. 
Unfortunately, the gallery and I had an argument and I couldn't just easily pull Sims painting and photography down like custom content but not custom content. Um, it was it was really struggling to load that for me. I, I couldn't I couldn't get it to happen. And I unfortunately didn't have the time to just sit with it for a while. And so I opted to go back and put just normal Sims art in. And I think that that makes the most sense again for the playability among more simmers overall. If you were to download this, maybe you don't want to have to have your sim paint four stories worth of art, uh, but you could. And I, I do think like it, when I go to play this, when I go to play the sim that I've created in my head and I go to play in this building, I will probably slowly remove the standard art and put in my sims works, especially if she paints by reference or takes photos, because I think it'd be very cool to have like shots of San Myshuno in this particular brownstone. I think that would be very, very cool. The closet in this house is insane. The closet in this house off the main bedroom, nuts. The storage, honestly, in this house, nuts. Um, but the, the, the like, ensuite closet is big enough it could be an ensuite bathroom, to be honest with you, and then you could have a two-bedroom, three-bath, or the other thing I considered doing but ultimately decided against because closets are not something I do often, I thought it would be fun, um, is you that you could turn that closet into the ensuite and then turn where the upstairs bathroom is into like an office nook. For example, maybe if you had like multiple sims living in that house, maybe you need a second office space or you need like a business career space or a teaching career space. Um, especially I believe it's teachers have to uh, do a lot of like homework grading and stuff on the computer, you might need that second space. So that is an option. You could have like a little, basically like a book nook or a study space up there and then move the the bathroom into that closet space. The only difference would be you would have to obviously do the layout different because that closet is long and skinny um, instead of being a little bit more square. But I think it's cute and the storage it offers is insane. There's also a bunch of storage in the basement in the form of cabinets, which in The Sims does not matter so much. But in real life, that would be amazing to have that kind of storage. We did that in the minimalist brownstone as well. Um, the, the bathrooms themselves, though, speaking of, will kind of naturally transition since we just talked about it. The upstairs bathroom, I adore. I'm really quite proud of that. I used the greenhouse windows to make a glass uh, shower enclosure, and I think it turned out really cool. It's very dark, but that's kind of the intention. Funnily enough, I think in real life it would probably freak me out a little bit because I'm very claustrophobic, but in The Sims I was like, this looks so cool. And because it's enclosed behind a door, if you were absolutely necessary about it, uh, your sim, you could have a sim showering, and if they stayed in the shower long enough, another sim could come and use the restroom and leave. Um, you, I think you'd maybe be playing a little bit there. Uh, you'd be, you'd be pushing the boundaries if you actually did that, but it's an option, right? Um, and maybe if your sims are married, it doesn't matter so much. The downstairs bathroom, the basement bathroom, the guest bathroom, if you will, is definitely a little bit more bare bones. It has sort of similar vibes, but very much, um, in a lower key fashion. You can tell it's not, it's not as custom. Um, and that's simply because I doubt it's going to be used as much. Each brownstone has, um, a utility closet type situation. This one is no different. This has a, a fake water heater and a fake electrical panel in it. These do not work. They are the decorative ones. If you were playing with residential rentals, you could swap those out, and I believe you might have to swap those out. I'm not entirely certain. Um, for certain events and things, your landlord comes over, has to fix the power, has to fix the water, whatever. But I left them to be just decorative right now because I can also imagine a universe in which you're playing this just as a residential. So I didn't want to, to force those sort of uh, gameplay loops on you without, without your knowledge. Also, if you're renting out the building, like if you're playing the landlord, I don't know how many of those you would actually want stacked up. You may just want one for the building, um, which I think would look a little bit silly uh, for brownstone, but you could leave them all decorative except like one. And then that would also solve the, the game loop problem. I think... I think the loft is probably my favorite part of this build, the, the upstairs attic, and it was the last part of the build we like really sunk a lot of time into, but I think it turned out so cool. There's a mural space with drop claws, there's two different easels up there, there's one downstairs as well, because in the public facing spaces I definitely wanted to make it still very clear that an artist lived here, which means there's three easels in the house, which means you can have so many projects going at once. Plus there's a digital sketch pad, because that seems to be a really fantastic way to earn 
actual like Somalians in game. There's two different cameras because again I wanted that idea of like she's multifaceted, she's awesome, or they depending who you're playing in the in the world. And that the upstairs is kind of split into two different painting zones and then sort of a desk space and it feels very very cozy and I love it very very much but there's also a bonus mural down in the backyard which we stick in just very quietly so you can go paint on the street essentially which I think is very cool and very um something very neat because my understanding is if you set this up correctly with residential rentals other sims can come and use that as well which means if your sim isn't interested in painting a mural that day maybe some of the neighborhood kids or something will come do that and I think that's really cute and it adds to the neighborhood um, and it's just an open backyard, so what a good use of space, right? I'm really proud of that. So that is basically our brownstone. I'm actually really proud of this one. I'm really happy how it turned out, and I'm really surprised it turned out as well as it did, considering how little time I had to work on it. I am very sorry about the style of voiceover we're going to be doing, because now the rest of the video you're just going to hear some jazzy music, which is awesome, but a little bit different than what we've been doing. I appreciate your patience while I try really hard to not miss an upload, but also really hard to get everything done at work. I really just appreciate y'all in general, and I'm very glad I still get a few minutes each day to maybe work on this before I go to bed. Having said that, though, I'm going to wish you a good day and a good week. I hope you're feeling loved, and if you're not feeling loved, please know that I love you. I'm glad you exist. I'm glad you're hanging out. You make the world a better place just by being you, and please know you guys bring me so much joy each day. I love you guys lots and lots, and I'll talk to you later. Bye! Mwah.